Okay, this is a special moment, especially for me, because right now I sit with person who initiate the uh, program bangkit uh, that uh, initiate by Google. So let's uh, say hi to William. Hello. Sure. Yeah, happy to, and thank you for inviting me to your uh, to to your podcast. And, sure. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is William Florence, and I lead uh, education and training programs for the Asia Pacific region. Uh, I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland, and uh, for the last year and a half, I've been working from home. So I have not been able to be in Indonesia, unfortunately. Hmm. Maybe you can uh, tell a little bit about yourself, like a fun fact or something funny, maybe. <laughs> wow, I don't know about funny. Uh, probably a lot of things about me are funny, but uh, uh, hmm, fun fact. Well, let me let me say a couple things. I've, I've been at Google uh, almost 11 years. Uh, wow. I, I, to you, I probably sound American, and, and I was born to American parents, but I was raised in Mexico. Uh, there's a fun fact. Uh, so I, while I don't speak Bahasa Indonesia, I speak uh, Spanish fluently because I grew up speaking both Spanish and English. Uh, nice. And uh, and uh, I've lived uh, in Europe now for the last 15 years. And and uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what else to say. I don't think any of that is particularly funny. <laughs> okay, then. So we can talk about Bangkit. Maybe uh, you can share a bit about what is Bangkit and what the story behind it. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the story of Bangkit really goes back a few years uh, when, uh, uh, when, when President Jokowi visited Google uh, at our headquarters. Uh, I've lost track of time. I think that was about four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, maybe five. Uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, we committed to training 100,000 developers on mobile technologies in Indonesia. And, uh, and, and I'm uh, part of, of what I've been doing at Google is leading these very large scale training initiatives. And, uh, and so Indonesia kind of fell into, into my hands as being my responsibility. And we worked uh, diligently to try to deliver on that commitment. And we did. We delivered uh, on the commitment of training more than 100,000 developers uh, in, in less than two years, as a matter of fact. Uh, but what it showed us is that uh, there's really an appetite for uh, rather more in-depth uh, training. And uh, in particular, uh, through that experience, we heard over and over and over again from our, from our partners and from leading tech companies that there was a challenge in, in the Indonesian tech ecosystem where students even if they went to a good university and had a good technical degree, uh, they, they weren't particularly well uh, prepared uh, for entering the, the workforce uh, in, in leading tech companies at least. So, uh, so as we were kind of finishing on the original commitment of 100,000 developers, we were trying to figure out what to do next. Um, I assembled a, a, a team of people uh, from industry, so primarily the, the leading uh, technology unicorns in Indonesia, uh, Gojek, uh, Tokopedia, Traveloka, and at the beginning Bukalapak was involved as well. I, I had some people from university and some people from government, and we sat in a room and we just had a blank, uh, a blank whiteboard and we did a design sprint and we came up with uh, basically the blueprint of what would become Bankit. Uh, so the mission of Bankit was to, uh, you know, was to develop uh, this program, uh, a training program that gave opportunity to people in Indonesia, regardless of their background, uh, to be able to better prepare themselves to, to, uh, to enter the workforce, either working for leading technology companies or maybe even starting their own. Uh, but really ultimately to try to deliver a measurable impact on the Indonesia technology ecosystem. Uh, that was the mission that we agreed upon. Uh, this was two, two plus years ago. Uh, and, and this year we ran the second version of Bankit. Uh, in the first year we ran a small pilot and this year we ran uh, kind of the, the bigger full scale version. Uh, so that's, that's the genesis. It was, uh, I think I had a notion of what we wanted to do, but it was really shaped with all of the partners. It wasn't uh, shaped purely by me or by Google. It was a collaborative effort. Yeah. And uh, that was a huge success for you, right? Uh, you, you successfully trained uh, about 3,000 students, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. So as I mentioned, in the first year, we did a small pilot. Uh, it kind of... Uh, 
uh, it kind of had to take a turn because of COVID. We planned on doing in-person workshops, but we had to set those aside and do it 100% online. Then it, that ended up kind of validating for us that doing something at scale and doing it purely online was possible. Uh, and, uh, and so this year, um, we decided to embed uh, Bankit inside of the Campus Merdeka program uh, by Dikti uh, and, and make it a program for university students only. Um, and we ended up having uh, more than 40,000 people that uh, that you know started the application process. It was quite a difficult application process. So only five thousand of them or so actually completed the full application, and then we selected three thousand students. So it was a it was a selective program. Um, we ended up with uh, with students from all over Indonesia, from two hundred and fifty uh, different universities, uh, from thirty two of the provinces. Uh, we had about thirty percent. Uh, of the participants that, that are females, uh, which as, as you probably know, is quite a high percentage uh, relative to what we see in other similar programs uh, in Indonesia and indeed around the world. Uh, so uh, very diverse uh, cohort really representing the breadth and depth of uh, talent across Indonesia. Um, you know, you said uh, it was a success. So well, a success for Indonesia, I think, right? Because we're uh, you know, we're with these 3,000 students, you know, I, I really feel like uh, time will tell, right? But I really feel like they're going to be standing out uh, from the crowd and actually contributing quite positively to the tech ecosystem. And and we really look forward to seeing that. You know, we expect, a, you know, a good number of these students to become certified. Um, and uh, and if, if we see the number that we expect to become certified, uh, do so, then Indonesia uh, will rank, you know, right at the top of the list in terms of number of certified developers in in these particular domains uh, for for Google. So, uh, so yeah, we feel like it's been a great success, and uh, and and we look forward to to continuing with it. Nice. So, uh, in terms of like uh, demography, maybe you can uh, share with us a bit. Uh, where do the students come and uh, how the gender uh, split, something like that. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I mean, I'm, I just mentioned it, right? They they, uh, they came from uh, 250 universities, really all over Indonesia. Um, we had, as part of our, uh, as part of our delivery, uh, we had a partnership, we have a partnership with 15 uh, select universities, uh, but students could come from any university as part of Campus Mardeka. Uh, so really, they spanned uh, the entirety of almost the entirety. I, I believe there's 34 provinces, and we had students from 32 provinces uh, th throughout the country. So uh, right across, uh, right across the whole country, from east to west and north to south. So uh, you know, I think uh, you know some gr additional granularity on that. I mentioned we had 15 partner universities. About half of the students came from those universities. Uh, the other half came from from the other 200 and uh, 40 or so universities remaining. Um, we had 30% uh, female participants. So just to put that in context, in our pilot program, uh, we had 23% female participants, and that was a record for us in Indonesia. If we look at uh, other programs that we've run, like Google Developer Kajar uh, and, and uh, Digital Talent Scholarship, uh, we usually saw a much lower uh, female participation. So uh, so we made a concerted effort to try to get the word out to female uh, participants this year, and we successfully got, uh, like I said, ne nearly a third of the participants uh, were, were females. Um, we had people, uh, you know, I know, I know that we were reaching uh, far afield in Indonesia when I attended some of the live sessions, and I would literally hear the crowing of roosters in the background as students were participating. And I've been in Jakarta enough to know that at least where I stay in Jakarta, you don't normally hear roosters, right? So I think these people were truly, you know, joining from their, you know, their their rural villages and, and farms. And we know that from from interacting with the students as well. We gave opportunity to to people who wouldn't otherwise normally have this kind of great opportunity. And they were super appreciative. So uh, yeah, so very, very diverse. We, we also, by the way, um, had about 20% uh, of the students that did not come from an IT background or IT or computer science background. So 
I mentioned we wanted it to be a program that anybody could join. You didn't have to have programming skills to join this uh, because we were going to teach them what they needed to know anyway. Uh, and indeed, we, like I said, we had 20% of the students that came from non-IT or computer science backgrounds, so very diverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have similar experience because I do uh, mentor uh, some of uh, uh, participants for uh, their um, capstone project. Oh, good. Thank so, you for yeah, doing I have that experience. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. And now uh, I'm intrigued with the how you scale that big, yeah, from mm -hmm. maybe 300. Uh, the mm -hmm. year before and now three thousands. How how mm -hmm. the teachings uh, and uh, study process uh, looks like in Bangkit 2021? Sure. Yeah. Well, you're right. We we did the pilot with 300 students and we only had one uh, learning path. It was a machine learning learning path in the pilot. Um, when we decided to go bigger this year, uh, the 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 main challenge, uh, frankly, was that. One of the core principles of, uh, of Bankit uh, is that we want it to be industry-led, meaning we want the students to have as much interaction as possible with, uh, with industry uh, practitioners. Yeah, so uh, when we decided to scale the program, um, the biggest challenge we had to deal with was identifying uh, enough volunteer instructors to support the learners. One of the core principles of Bankit is that it be industry-led, uh, which to us means that we want the students to have as much interaction as possible with real-world industry practitioners, pe people like yourself. Uh, and so, uh, so to go from 300 to 3,000, we had to, you know, really, you know, reach out broadly to the communities and try to identify relevant instructors that would help us. Um, But, uh, but we did so. We ended up with more than 350 active volunteers. Uh, you were one of them, so thank you again. Uh, and, uh, and that was probably the most challenging aspect of scaling. The, the other part, um, of course, was you know, just managing 3,000 students. You know, they, uh, you know, they, they completed over 14,000 specializations and courses collectively. Uh, we had four, more than 450,000 assignments that had to that we had to give feedback on for the students. So there was a whole bunch of work behind the scenes that was quite a challenge for us as well. Uh, but we, you know, we used, you know, some of even Google's own technologies like Google Classroom to help make that easier. Uh, but still, it was difficult. Um, and then, of course, you know, embedding the whole thing within Campus Mardeca. And Campus Mardeca is a is a relatively new uh, program in Indonesia. And frankly, many of the universities didn't really understand how it worked. And uh, And some of the systems that, that were being built for Campus Mardeca were still in their infancy. So, you know, we definitely had some challenges along the way, but I'm, I'm just really pleased that despite all of those uncertainties and going from 300 to 3,000, we ended up with uh, an 80% uh, graduation rate. We actually had about 94% of the students who stayed engaged throughout the whole process, which is just incredible. Uh, five months of 100% online learning. Uh, and we, because we have, you know, kind of strict requirements to graduate from Bunkit, 80% of them in the end uh, graduated, which is also remarkable. We had a, we had a, a 72% uh, completion rate on a much lesser curriculum in the pilot program. So for us to achieve, you know, this level of completion uh, was again, just astounding and actually a real testament to the perseverance of the Indonesian students. So uh, really exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. many uh, achievements you get. So can you share about the response that you get or some uh, testimony or uh, success story you get from students uh, maybe uh, a year before or uh, Bangkit 2021? Maybe you have one? Yeah, well, I mean, in the in the pilot itself, and the reason why we decided to go bigger, you know, we we heard back from our students. We surveyed them at the end, uh, and and uh, you know, a, a good number of them told us that they felt like Bankit made a big difference in their ability to get a job or an internship. Um, we had about 20% of the students in the pilot that that got either a job or an internship within just a few weeks of completing Bankit. 
so we knew that it was helpful. Um, and, and, and this year, uh, we're just, you know, we're just kicking off. We're about to kick off the employment phase of Bunkett. So we don't have those statistics yet this year. But, you know, speaking anecdotally, uh, of course, it's hard, you know, for us to get to know all 3,000 of the students, particularly in an online modality. But uh, we did have various different uh, tools and ways of communicating with them. And we heard some amazing stories. I, I, I won't remember their names off the top of my head, but we had a student uh, you know, again, from rural Indonesia, who, because of COVID, his father uh, lost his job. So the family, you know, went through some really uh, difficult uh, economic hardship. And, and uh, he was just so thankful and appreciative to be part of Bankit, because for him, it represented, it represents hope, you know, hope that he can actually enter into the tech ecosystem, earn a good income, which I believe is probably going to change, you know, the, the, circumstances of his entire family, right? Uh, we had uh, we had one student, uh, you know, who actually represented all of Bankit and, uh, and, and was invited to the presidential palace to talk about his experience in, in Bankit. Uh, and he was on our, on our cloud computing learning path. And, you know, he represented the spirit of Bankit when he said it was just a great experience and opportunity to learn from each other as well as from experts. And he's so hopeful that it's going to make a big difference to, to his own career. Uh, so just so many stories like that, uh, that, that we heard, uh, throughout, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we communicate on various different channels. Like I said, we, we had our own social, uh, kind of social digital community platform where we did video sharing, uh, and, and students, you know, posted videos of their own stories and what they got from Bunkit. Uh, and it's just so gratifying for me to hear from them and hear how what we do makes a real difference to their lives. And, uh, Time will tell. You know, we did this, as I said at the beginning, to try to deliver real value to the tech ecosystem. And uh, that will take time to materialize, right? But I'm, I'm pretty confident that it'll make a big difference. Okay. Now, uh, we talk about Bankit 2021 and uh, Bankit uh, uh, has just held a graduation ceremony. Can you share a recent update about Bankit 2021 program? Yeah, so the Bankit uh, 2021 program, the curriculum ended at the end of June. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, on uh, July 15th, uh, we, we held the graduation event uh, for Bankit, uh, where we celebrated the achievements of these 80, you know, 80% of the students that completed and, and a smaller num number of them that are completing with, with what we call distinction, uh, that are kind of standout graduates. We also, and this is, a, this is I think, quite an interesting element, um, as part of the curriculum, all of the students uh, had to work on this capstone project that you were a mentor on. Uh, we started with 483 of those projects, and then we narrowed it down ultimately to the best 15 projects of the 483. So this year in the curriculum, we had students doing, uh, doing machine learning, mobile development, and cloud computing. And all of the teams had participants from all three of the learning paths, and that was by design, right? So that the solutions that they would create would be more complete solutions using elements of all three of the learning paths. Um, our hope is that, and, and each of these 15 projects is receiving grant funding from Bankit, uh, which will be matched by Kedaireka, uh, by Dikti. Uh, so the 15 projects, we're hoping some of them will become, you know, the next success stories in Indonesia and go on and hire people on their own. Again, that will take time to unfold. And those projects now are being transitioned into our university partners and they'll be they'll be incubated in the university labs with mentorship from from industry again. Uh, so that's something that, you know, that will carry on. Uh, so Bankit curriculum ended in June, but the projects will continue. Uh, the other thing that we did in 2021 is we introduced a program uh, from Stanford University's uh, Hasselplatner Design School, the D School, called the University Innovation Fellows Program. Uh, part of what DICTI and, and the Ministry of Education is quite interested in is modernizing education, the higher education system in Indonesia, uh, and trying to be more innovative. Uh, so the University Innovation Fellows Program, as the name implies, is a student-led initiative for students to introduce innovation on their campuses. So through Bankit, we've identified 58 candidates that Stanford will hopefully be confirming. Uh, and those students will start their fellowship in, in the fall, in the September timeframe, right? And they will run, you know, for the rest of their, their college tenure, right? 
so again, uh, that's another artifact of Bankit that we hope you know will will deliver impact over time. So even though Bankit 2021 has ended, uh, there are activities, there are initiatives that will carry on you know well into the future. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, we do plan on doing a Bankit 2022. But uh, let me let me tell you about Bankit 2022. So, uh, you know, we, we haven't announced it officially yet, but uh, the plan uh, is 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 basically to build upon um, the strengths in Bankit 2021 and make Bankit 2022 even better. Uh, we expect it to be pretty similar in terms of the structure. We'll still have the same three learning paths. We'll probably still have 3,000 uh, students, uh, and we'll still run it as a Campus Mardeca program. Of course, we're taking feedback on those uh, on those design improvements over the summer. Um, you know, I think, uh, like I said, it will be announced uh, officially a little bit later, probably at the Google for Indonesia event. Uh, and what we're expecting uh, is we're expecting to have even a lot more applicants this year. Uh, and, and that's in part because the students have been talking to each other and so many of the students now know about Bankit uh, and even know about Campus Mardeca. So we expect to see a super high enrollment uh, or at least application rate. And as I said, uh, we'll probably take 3,000 students again next year. Very very good insight <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you for that yeah maybe you have a message for aspiring developers or uh, students uh, college students or uh, fresh graduates or tech talent in indonesia maybe some tips or some uh, yeah as aspiration yeah i mean yeah maybe let me try um i uh you know, I'm a father of, of, of two uh, young adults as well. They're at university, and, and uh, I guess I'd like to give the same tip to Indonesian uh, students as I do to my own kids, which is, uh, you know, have hopefully have uh, have an idea about what your passions are. Um, you know, what you, if you don't know what your passion is, at least know what your interests are. Uh, have the courage to pursue them. Uh, and, uh, and nowadays, uh, there's, you know, no shortage of opportunity. So Bankit is one example of an opportunity if, if you can get selected for such a program where you can accelerate your own skill development. But, uh, nowadays you can go and learn, you know, absolutely anything you want to learn, um, you know, almost for free, if not for free, uh, from so many different places, uh, online. So, uh, so my advice would be, you know, my high level advice would be that would be, you know, have an idea about what your passions and interests are and have the courage to pursue them. Like, don't allow there to be any false obstacles or, you know, don't just don't accept whatever barriers are there. As I said, we had we had students who, you know, frankly, had to you know, walk for kilometers to get to their nearest Internet cafe because they didn't have, you know, any kind of Internet access from home. But they didn't let that stop them from completing this very difficult curriculum. Our curriculum was about 800 hours of work for all the students, uh, and even students, you know, that could have had lots of reasons to drop out did not, uh, because they had a passion about what they were doing, and 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 Bankit gave them an opportunity to pursue it. So, but it doesn't have to be Bankit, is my point. You know, have have an idea about what you want to do and the courage to pursue it and pursue it. Um, you know, at a at a at a high level, I would say. Uh, you know, even if you're not technically inclined, um, you know, it's good to have some technical skills these days, right? The future, uh, you know, of all industries involves technology. So, uh, so for programs like Bankit and many others, you don't need to be a programmer to get involved, uh, but it'll create so many opportunities for you uh, in the future. So that's, that's probably the main advice that I would give uh, Indonesians. I guess probably the, the, the second one is, um, you know, what I've noticed is that uh, Indonesian students, at least, uh, you know, tend to be very reserved and quiet. Um, and, you know, today's work environment, you know, requires that you be uh, participatory and engaged and, and uh, collaborative. Uh, and and uh, that's one of the things that we try to instill uh, throughout the Bankit experience is we, we have a lot of instructor-led sessions that are done in real time, and we try to get the students to, to talk and ask questions and use critical thinking and be analytical. So, you know, building your soft, what, what are called soft skills or career development skills, I like to call them, uh, is uh, probably particularly important for young Indonesians. And, 
And uh, the Bangkit program is particularly challenging because we do almost the whole thing in English, and many Indonesians are very uncomfortable using English. But the reason we do that is because leading technology companies, not not only Google, but even Tokopedia and Traveloka and, and Gojek, uh, they, you have to be able to work in English, right? You have developers and customers and partners from all over the world, right? Uh, so, you know, so those are some tips that I would give, uh, you know, in addition to following your passion um, and, and have the courage to pursue them, uh, focus on, on developing your soft skills. If uh, people want to know more about uh, program Bangkit, uh, where do they go? Yeah, great question. So, uh, so immediately you can go to, um, there's a short link. If you just type into your browser, the letter G period CO, so G.co, G.co slash Bangkit, B-A-N-G-K-I-T. Uh, it will take you to uh, some information about the program. Uh, and as I kind of teased, you know, we will have an official an official announcement of Bankit 2022 upcoming. Uh, and uh, you'll probably see more information on that website. And then we'll have a separate application uh, process for you to follow. So, uh, yeah, we definitely uh, encourage interested people to take a look at it. And hopefully you can join us on on the path. I know I know students these days have many, many options and I guess, you know, we've done something right with Bankit because we've seen other companies already announcing uh, Campus Mardeka programs that look similar to Bankit. Uh, and I, I know that there's other, you know, commercial offerings in the market, including uh, Hacktivate and others where students can go and learn skills as well. So uh, Bankit is not the only game in town, but uh, but we, we'd love it. We'd love to see more excited students. It's just really thrilling for us to be able to impact people's lives that way. Can wait, can wait. Okay. Uh, there is anything else you, you want to share with us? Uh, no, I, I guess no. probably the, the last thing I, I, I would like to say is uh, is I've really enjoyed uh, all the time that I've been able to spend in Indonesia over the last uh, five or six years, I think it's been. And um, uh, unfortunately, uh, COVID causes me to have to kind of transition into a new role. Uh, so Bankit is in very good hands. Uh, it's in a good position. I'm, I'm proud to have uh, been able to get it established in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, now it's going to be uh, it's going to be led by a local team, uh, the local Google team and uh, the same the same Bankit partners. But we're going to have a, a local team uh, take it over, uh, which is good. Uh, so it's time for me to. Uh, to move on to other things. So uh, okay. I'm definitely going to be watching and seeing what happens with Bankit in the future. But And I would definitely love the opportunity to come back to Indonesia and uh, meet with you and other people uh, in the future as well. Uh, and I look forward to doing so. But uh, but it means that for now, I have to go and work on some other things at Google. Closer to home. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, so we thank you uh, for you, your team and Google for your contribution to Enrich uh, Tech Talent in Indonesia. Great. So thank you very much, William, for your time. I know uh, you are on leave uh, and spend time with me and share uh, a bit about Bangkit. We see you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.